This motion picture has been inspired by the life of Buford Pusser, as related to the author by Sheriff Pusser himself. However, changes have been made to avoid identification or portrayal of persons now living. I attest that the foregoing is a true statement. Signed, Howard B. Kretzek, author. Ideas are flying around here than a possum has tricks. That right? Like what? Well, for one, as Buford's doctor, I don't see how any of you can ask that man to run for office again with half his face shot off. Now, there's talk around that maybe we need a sounder man for sheriff. Maybe you, Brady. Thank you, but uh, there's no way. Not unless Buford would have asked me himself. But that's one thing he's not going to ask. Because this is a job he's going to want to finish himself. You mean to tell me that people around here thinking that we ain't going all out to reelect Buford sheriff? Being his pa, I can't say I don't go along with them what disagrees. It's just God's grace he lived through that ambush. Well, that state line crowd of gamblers and whores is clear run out of business. Now, I say Buford's entitled to all the doctrine time he needs. Carl, anyone thinks your son's gonna rest easy till he finds out whoever last one of them was, they just don't know your boy. I've got to go along with Floyd, Carl. Uh, we might as well be talking round and round about whether to plant soybeans or cotton. You just put it right, Carl. If Buford sets his mind to stand for re-election, there's no man or thing in West Tennessee is going to talk or scare him out of it. You know Buford ain't giving up that badge until every last man in those ambush cars is either dead or in jail. That imbecile. Uh, it's Picky Dobson at the gate, sir. I see clearly where you are. I also see you brought somebody along with you. Well, it's just Ray Henry, sir. Well, just you follow what I tell you next time about bringing anybody. Now get on in here. All right, sir. Sit out here and wait. 
Well, I just uh, anyway. Now, just what is in your stupid head, Pinky Dobson, bringing that moron here with you? Don't you ever stop to think? Well, I thought you might want to talk to him, too, Mr. Wood. After all, Ray Henry's been in this with me all along. Yes, and so was that gunman you brought down here from Boston. Insurance that Buford Pusser was going to be put away once and for all. Isn't that what you told me? Well, Christ Almighty, you know how many times we hit him. I mean, it ain't natural that a man could survive through all the bullets we put in him. Well, you picked the one time his wife is in the car next to him. And you fix it so that the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, they're both down here just shaking away at that tree, trying to make something fall out. Well, you can't blame that on me, sir. Oh, can I? Now, you listen to me, Dobson. And you listen good. That son of a bitch, wherever they got him hit out, healing up there, he shows himself back in McNary County. You had better find some way for him to have the kind of accident you failed at. Or I am telling you, Pinky Dobson, there ain't enough piney woods in the whole of Tennessee for you to continue in the whiskey business. Once me and my partner say you're out of business. You understand? I understand, Mr. Witter. I know exactly what you want, and me and Ray Henry aim to do just that. Good. That old man Witter's got ice water for blood, I'll tell you that. Gives you one of them fishy looks, you know he means what he says. What does he want? Wants us to get pussy when he comes out of hiding. That's what he wants, and I mean this time, icing for good. Well, we can do that. Well, the thing about it is this time is so much heat, it's got to look like an accident. Yeah, how do we do that? I think of something. <laughs> I bet you do, Pinky. I bet you do. <laughs> Thank you, Sheriff. Sorry we haven't come up with the right one yet. We will. Sheriff Pusser's mother and children are here. Just leave me. Keep your advice, Sheriff. See, they finally took that old cast off your face. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting better every day now. Carl said. There's something I gotta ask you, son. Go ahead, Mom. What about re-election? Tell Dad. Let him put my name up. But I don't want nobody to go out of their way. I want the people in the county to make that decision. Daddy? When they take the bandages off your face, is it going to look funny? <laughs> oh, go on, man. Oh, don't, don't make your daddy laugh. It hurts his baby. <laughs> what a thing to say. Come on, help you too. You've time to let your daddy get some rest. <laughs> you wait outside by the policeman for just a minute. I love you, daddy. Come home soon. I'm taking care of things real good. I know you are, son. Thank you. <laughs> Ain't no shame if you have to give up being sheriff. I know that, Mom. Oh, and I talked about it. Part of a lot. You got two beautiful children. Mom being taken away from me. And you know me. Anna ain't getting any younger. You think about it, sir. You think about it real hard.
this and those old farmers down there, those old hay seeds there, they're making some kind of Paul Bunyan folk hero out of him without ever having seen his shot up face. Now listen, sure as hell, he is gonna get re-elected if we don't spread some money down there and buy that badge back. Well, sure, I would like to know where they got him hit out, but we don't know where he's hit. To hell with what it costs. It's what we're not making down there ever since we lost out on our whoring and gambling enterprises. Get it ready, Jr. Coming up the walk. Oh, I see him. I see him. Doing, well, congratulations on the big boat, Sheriff. Thanks. Appreciate it. Well, you all been keeping out of trouble, have you? Uh, pretty much. A little pretty nice much. trading. A little dominoes is all. Well, it sounds fair enough, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you. Uh, uh, Sheriff, yes? figured in case you lost that old stick of yours somewhere along the way, we all got together and fixed you a new one. Oh. <laughs> That's nice. That's mighty nice. I appreciate it. See there? All cards are letters in it. Yes, sir. Sure did. I'm gonna take it back down to the office and see how many of y'all are called an X mark. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's got that club with him. He still got it. Hi, Buford. Hey, Jones. Good to have you back, Buford. It's nice to be back. How are you, sir? I don't mind. We missed you, Sheriff Pusser. Why can't I miss you, too? Hey, Buford. Hey, Virgil. Hi. Joan? You look fine, Buford. I do? Mm-hmm. Okay. about a job. You You looking for a job? Not taking a job, Ruby Ann. Giving a man a job. A high-paying job. Let me start the 15th lap when they cross the start and finish line next time around. And if Mike's going to make his move, he's going to make it now. Stud party still holding quiet. Checking the beer joints regular. Mostly operating within the law. Ain't a roulette wheel or a working whore left in the whole county. All right. Any whiskey making? Man, it's hard to get solid information, Buford. You know, these back end people, they don't care what you and me think about their moonshine operation. Six dollars a jug for a dollar's worth of corn and sugar. Sure beats hog farming for a lot of them. Buford, what are we talking about whiskey cooking for? When all we want to know is what it is you want us to do. Get those bastards shot, you and your wife. Now you listen to me. The only thing any of us are going to do is keep the law for the folks who pay us our salaries. I ain't about to use this office to get vengeance on the people I owe it to. Are you crazy? Those people hate you. Man, they hate your guts. They hate you. Do you understand that? They'll never forgive you for killing Callie and busting up that operation. I mean, they would like to see your name on a headstone. I know that. Well, ain't you scared? I am. 
And I'm scared for you. Me too, Buford. All right, me too. I'm scared. I'd be a damn fool if I wasn't. But that's got nothing to do with it. We're here to serve the people of this county, and that's what we're going to do. <laughs> You think you can take care of the store? Oh, bro, got something yeah. for you. Uh, Drunk and disorderly down at Joe Britt's new place, busting it up pretty good. Oh. Uh-uh. I'll take it. Wait a minute. That's a black joint. You know I take care of all black joints. Now, look, don't want nobody to take my job away from me. And I'd like for people to know that I'm back. See, I don't want anyone to start wondering. Well, then, why don't we all just go down there together? Oh, bro. It used to be I gave the orders around here. Why don't you take the next call? Okay. All right. See, if I can't handle a drunken disorderly by myself, taxpayers got a right to stop wondering. Know what I mean? No, I want to go to Selma.
501, 501. This is Buford. I need an ambulance at Joe Bridge Place. On the double. Gunshot. Grady, it's a setup! Buford's been shot! Come on, let's go! Steamer! 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 Come on, Steamer! You're hurt! Come on back here! All calls to Joe Britt! All calls to Joe Britt immediately! Repeat! All calls to Joe Britt immediately! Buford's been shot! Bad tourniquet, Sheriff. You all right? I'm fine. Well, what happened? Not enough for you to call out every man we got, tell you that much. Steamer. Steamer, look at me, goddammit. Now who paid hey, you to hey, hey. oh, my, oh my. What the hell are you doing? Steamer had a little too much strength, that's all. How can you be so sure of that? I'm sure. How do you know that it wasn't because a setup? Because I know Steamer. I still think it was a setup. Cobra. Yeah. Thank you. from the TBI and the other's an FBI man he brought with him. Are you sure? Well, you know, Mr. Hudson, the TBI man. They've been waiting over an hour for you to get home. What happened to you? Mess. Look at you. Oh, you've heard. All right, Mama. I had some trouble at your bridge. I'm sorry. You all right? I've been waiting for you. Rocco Carlo Mangotti. That's him. You're positive, Sheriff? I'm absolutely certain. And that's the only face you remember at those car windows? Except for the state line, that's already accounted for. I didn't see all of them. This uh, Mangotti spent more of his life inside than he has on the streets. When we get to him, he'll tie in with the others. Boston? That's right. You mean to tell me that they brought a killer all the way down here from Boston? Sheriff, they wanted you pretty bad, and probably still do. How you doing, Floyd? Buford. Good to see you. How you doing? Nice seeing you. <laughs> hey, buddy. I'm going to be needing a new unmarked car every four to six weeks. Can you handle that? Regular police engine? Yep. Buford, the county give you clearance on this? Nope. 
Put anything over county allowance, I'll pay for out of pocket. Now, this is personal. More than that, it's confidential. Don't need to explain, Buford. It was my cause. What you've done for the folks in this county. Hey, main thing. Nobody but you and me is to know when I switch cars. All right. Appreciate it. party you crazy man i mean you out of your mind would i scare you a little i don't know why i knew exactly where i was going to end up right to the inch yeah well, i believe it i seen you wipe out clyde white at that track come on i'll buy you some good meat i hope you got the place picked out where you're gonna try it you bet I know at least six places that would be good. I want you to pick the best. Pinky, I know exactly what you mean. Thank you, sir, and come back to see you. You know, folks know you're bad now. We just got us a hell of a good tip. What? A whole gang of butane cookers draining off maybe 500 gallons a week right alongside the Hansi River. No kidding. All right, let's get the one now. You, Obra, Miles, and then pick everybody else going on in on flash. And I'll be the flash man. Uh, why are you on flush? You aren't half healed up yet. But I am the boss. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> told me down to Pickwick Lake last Sunday. Caught himself a whole mess of brim. Is that right? I hope he had himself a fishing license. Chef Posse, you all under arrest. Freeze! Don't you ever pull a gun on me again, Rudy. Whiskey making is one thing. Gun using is something else. Look, Posse, I'm on parole. I go back in. I go back in for good. You stupid son of a bitch. You know that and still you use a gun. Hello, everybody. Looks like it. Miss somebody. <laughs> Thank you. 
you sure know how to make some people unhappy. Seems that this uh, Boston boy was in the Arkansas penitentiary with Pinky Dawson, the man we hired to get the job done. Now, outside his mouth, open up even as far as Boston. It's going to be heard right back down here where we earn our living. Now, we all pay our share. I'll get to the right people up there in Boston and see that our problem is taken care of. What about Pusser? He's alive and walking around. I ain't sleeping good, I can tell you that. <laughs> well, now, this coming week, you happen to read about a certain car accident he's gonna have. You're gonna be sleeping real good. <laughs> that happens, send you back down a bus full of holes, two days' notice. <laughs> confiscated vehicles to go to the county auction on that last Ray Buford. Well, that was just the one time. <laughs> we'll have some soon enough. Hi, the children. Hi, thanks. Tell them I said hello. I'll be sure to do that. Rod Speed or Cockshaw Whiskey Runner, headed for Chihuahua. Keep it posted. <laughs> Buford always spotting the runners. His talent, I guess. He keeps studying up. Maybe he get as good.
You all right, Buford? I'm last on the way. Well, send it back. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Take a look at that. Hub, and tell me how many black balls are stripped clean. <clears throat> Whew. Two of them stripped clean. And the other three? Three of them clean as a dog tooth, full thread. That's what I thought. Whew. Buford Pusser, you gonna try to tell me this wasn't a setup? Oh, buddy, this was a damn show setup. Now, this man is no fool. Make no mistake about that. You overplay it, and I can guarantee you he'll spot you first thing out. I never overplay it, Mr. Widow. That's good. That's very good. I'm glad to hear it. All right, you take a week. Take two weeks. Ease in. But you make sure you set him up for a can't-miss situation. I understand. That bungling Pinky Dobson is more Henry Henry. The trouble those two have caused me trying a true Christian man's patience. Mr. Witter, there are names for different games. I know how to play my game. I hope so. I sincerely hope so. Fast blue Camaro, white racing stripe. Racing tires, only machine like that in three counties got to belong to that race driver, Stud Pardee. All right. What do you know about him? A nice little Angus breeding farm across the state line. Spends an unholy fortune on them race cars. Uh-huh. Where does he get his money? Only gossip, Buford, but once heard he supports that racing garage running bonded Missouri whiskey cross into Alabama. Really? What's that all about, Buford? That Floyd is a jesting case. <laughs> no. Every day we bust the steel and the next day there's another steel in the next It doesn't seem to stop. Stud Party from down in Boonesville drives that blue Camaro with a white racing stripe. Yeah. Anybody spot him in McNair County, hold him till I get there. What? Hold him on what charge? Speeding, reckless driving. As a matter of fact, suspicion of carrying contraband isn't bad. Let's go, Miles! What you got, Jim? Rocco Carlo Mungai. What about him? We found him last night at a Boston red light with his motor still running. 132 caliber bullet hole in the left temple. Those are both from whatever he knew, don't it? Yeah, and it tells us they were that afraid of what he could have said. A lot of paperwork. Trying to match up his Arkansas penitentiary cellmates, known yard friends. Do me a favor, will you, and see who you can pair up from your area, okay? Sure. Some sap sucker from down there brought him in. That's the way the Bureau sees it, Sheriff. Johnny, this one, please. Oh, I hate filling out papers. Uh, pardon me, gentlemen. Could you direct me to the clerk's office? All right! You been practicing on me, huh? Ah, uh, just a lucky shot. Lucky? Thank you. Lucky. Hold up, you two. Lucky. Refreshment time. Oatmeal cookies. Oh, fresh. Oh, you. You're gonna wear me out. Oh. You thank Grandma for making these? Uh-uh. Why not? Because I made them myself. She showed me. Did you? <laughs> well, come on, Mike. Are they any good? Just like Mom made them. Who's down to the livestock auction? Well, it ain't me, and it sure looks like it ain't you, so who is it? That little racetrack driver, Stud Pardee, driving the same pretty blue Camaro, parked right out in front. 
Is he inside? Yeah. Ober and Miles are washing them bid every black Angus comes down the block. All right. Run on down there. Tell him not to do anything till I get there. I'll tell him. Mike, go on in. Fetch my initial oak stick off the gun rack. Okay. Just toss it in my front seat. Wanna? You tell Grandma I'll be home by supper time? I'll tell her. Do that again. Come on, Mike. Constitutional rights. Save me the time when I find a contraband inside. Well, here's the key. Go on, open it up. Okay. You have the right to remain Thank you, I've silent. Got it. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present. Brady, rip the lining off that door and search inside of it. Be good. Touch, I'm going to sue you. Touch that car again. I'm going to sue you. And I'm going to take a look inside. You can decide at any time to exercise these rights. And not answer any questions or make any state. You better not touch that engine, Pusser. That's a $12,000 motor in there, you son of a bitch! Sounds like you might have something hidden in there. to death, I will kill your heart and chest. Yeah, I start numb with this and let me assess this joy that I suck and set as takes the key to my heart when my heart is not a dog. Just lay by a dream to be your king Please, can it be my chest? I never, all my life I will protect your heart But I can't withstand the Dumb shit. Right there. 
Who you run this tale for? Ain't for nobody. Just us here ain't nobody else. That's right. How come you got time to hassle us poor blacks, Sheriff? Same as everybody else. Same as that big horse ranch on the hill. Electric pots cooking night and day rock 100. Are you talking about AC hand plates? How come you leave him alone? Cause that rich old white man's good friend of your daddy's. You better not be lying to me. Damn, we did catch it. I'm breathing. You breathing. Oh, bro? Yeah. I want you to swear out a warrant for A.C. Hand. I don't want there to be any misunderstandings from anybody. Hold it, A.C. You're under arrest. I said hold it. How far do you think you can get out of here? Why are you doing this to me? You think there's something special? <laughs> what, what, what does it mean, Hubert? Operation this size would buy you penitentiary time. Oh, my God. And information on who handled distribution, supply to corn and sugar might make it easy on you. Well, you know I can't do that, Buford. Well, then you know I couldn't have handled no different, neither. if I can understand you, Buford. A.C. Hand. My God, just the best friend I ever had since before I'm too tiny to even go to school. What did you want me to do, Dad? Well, you could have told me, I guess. You and I'm warning him before we moved in? Yes, I might just well have done that. Then, the only way I can get to the man at the top is by tearing away from the bottom on out. No matter who you destroy, someone destroyed my family. My children are motherless and I count on the man at the top. And that's who I'm after. And I thought you knew that. into McNair. I sure appreciate it if you and your boys would give me a call up here. You got a charge against him, have you? Speeding, reckless driving, nothing important. I just want to keep an eye on him. Know what I mean? I'll be talking to you. Bye. Do you remember my uncle? The one I was telling you about, traps and meat and beaver all these years? No. Well, it doesn't matter. But anyway, he and this other old boy, what do you think they saw this morning? Uh, <laughs> uh flying sauce. Oh, come on, Bu! Jeff, could I bother you? Just a minute. Well, miss? 
I am so fascinated by all this wealth of historic material. There's a dozen questions I just have to ask someone who's lived here all his life. Well, anything I can do to help? Well, from Shiloh down to Pickwick Landing. There are so many side roads, you know, back in places, and I just have to see. I know you're busy, but... Miss, all friendly folk down there. Just make sure any time you open up a gate, you close it behind you. Know what I mean? Do you have a few minutes? No, I really don't. You see, I was talking with Deputy Eke about something rather important. Oh, I understand. Oh, I'm sorry I broke him. It's all. But I am going to hold you to your kind offer. First chance you get. <laughs> Do that. Mm -hmm. Bye now. Bye. What were you saying? Well, no, well, what it was is his uncle said he saw this this man this dressed up and driving this slick-looking racing boat. He was setting up a new cooking operation down on the hatchet. Over. Does he know who the man is? Hmm. But I bet you he'd know that boat if he saw it or if he heard it again. All right. Now, you tell your uncle. If he ever sees that boat again, to give you a call. And then you call me, and I don't care what time of day it is. All right, I'll do that. But... Are we going to let them set up operation? Oh, right. It's a lot more important we get the man behind the operation than a bunch of utensils. Don't you agree? Sure. <laughs> All right. And now will that uncle of yours a favor? Thank you. You see, Mr. Medlock, every time I found some way of putting you off. Not at all. Easing in doesn't mean pushing in, Mr. Whittle. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sheriff Pusser will go for a drive with me within a week from today. I assure you. Why? Why are you so sure? I know when a man is interested, Mr. Witter. His wife dead almost a year. Eight months in the hospital. He's interested. Believe me. Well, you that cocksure, you better have your shooters out on the lake every day. They work for me, Mr. Witter. They don't miss. He gets out on that lake. Ain't ever gonna float up from that bottom. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something. If it all turns out the way you say it is, it's all over and done. No reason in the world you and I can't be uh, better friends. You can afford me for this contract, Mr. Witter. But what I see behind your eyes, you couldn't possibly afford. Just so that's clear. Buford, you in there? Yeah. Orbit just called you. Yeah. Said to tell you that boat you was interested in. They seen it. He said to tell you it's on the hatchet. Above Hornsby, coming into McNary. About a half hour ago. Okay, Dad. Tell me I ain't got no time for eggs. I'll just have a cup of coffee on my way out. I'll tell her.
Car number three, this is 501. Come on in, over. This is car number three, Buford. You on your way? Negative. I've got a small mechanical problem up here. Nothing I can't take care of, though. Y'all go in on your own. The man in the boat is what you're after. Make sure you flank that riverbank real good. Over now. Okay. Let's move out. in this business, the dumber I seem to get. I fall tripping that second line. Like stumbling over a pebble, Grady. Could happen to anyone. Well, they were laying down some heavy shooting, Buford. Uh, it must have been at least half a dozen of them. There was no way we could get through that brush to get to them. I mean, and then that boat just took off. Just took off. Oof. Obra. Whiskey making and gun shooting used to be two different things. Don't seem like it's going to be that way anymore. Something wrong with my load, Sheriff? I don't know. I never knew Hatch your hardware mill to be so busy. Why you say that? Seems like this is the fourth or fifth time this week I've seen you hauling a full load. No, no. Not me, Sheriff. That right? You don't mind me taking a look, man. Ain't you got to have a, a warrant or something? Just radio on down some and have them bring one up while we wait. That suit you better? Hell, Sheriff. Go on, have a look, but it ain't nothing but a stack of boards. That's right. Hmm? Big trouble, boy. Yes, sir. Who are you hauling this stuff for? I don't truly know, Sheriff. I just take whatever they give me and try to move it across into Alabama without getting caught. Except you just got caught. Are you sure you don't know who your boss is? Well, I think maybe... It's this man comes by and checks every morning this fast old speedboat. 
Someone was telling me just the other day. Pinky Dobson, he got himself one fine racing boat. That who you mean? It was something like that. Dobson, I... Yeah, I think you're right, Sheriff. Yeah. Now, you wants to have your choice. Cup a few years, federal penitentiary. Or you wants to get this truck out of my sight. And don't show back up and around here next two weeks. Which you think you might pick? Oh, well, shit, Sheriff. Take the whiskey. Just, just give me a chance to get off the dime. All right. But like I said, you keep your word to me. Maybe I ain't seen nothing here today but a stack of boards. Sheriff, I'd, I'd sooner, sooner break my word to you as, as lie to my own mama. And you sure better not be lying to your mama. Good morning, Buford. Almost Good morning. ran you down. Almost. Mm. Whatever happened to our daily visitor? Well, who's that? You know that graduate student, Mole Miss? Oh, I haven't seen her all week. Hope I never do again. <laughs> Why not? Because I think she's just a big pain in the neck, that's all. Oh. Buford? Yeah. Floyd Tate's on the phone. Okay, I'll take them off. That's beautiful. I couldn't be happy to hear anything, really. Well, it's kind of sudden. Sudden. Whenever you finish polishing that fender, suppose you do the other three. It's my day off, and I don't work on my day off. Well, if it is your day off, what do you do in here? Ain't you got some teeth need pulling or something? No, I, I think I kind of miss Grady's ugly face. Nice, very nice. Where are you going, Buford? Hey, it's picking up a new car. Hey, why don't you let me take it? Yeah, I wouldn't mind driving it myself. <laughs> hey, you two drive <laughs> away. It's my day off. It's not like I'm doing it on county time. Why don't you let me take it? All right. Governor? Here you go. <laughs> now drive slowly. Oh, sure. <laughs> I gave you the ticket.
Honest to Christ, Sheriff, he, he didn't have any control over that car at all. Shooting from side to side, it's a wonder he didn't roll over a couple of times before he hit us. I'll write out any kind of report you want me to. Put it down just like it happened and put my name on it. Anything I can do to help. unto eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ at whose coming in glory. Magister, the judge of the world, the earth shall give up their dead. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, from henceforth blessed are the dead who dieth in the Lord. Even so saith the Spirit, for they shall rest from their labor. Sorry, Mr. Eaton. Well, none of your fault, Mr. Buston. We all know that. Well, sir, your son died in my place. That car was fixed to crash. Ogle was a very good friend. We're gonna be all right, Sheriff. It takes time, these things. Yes, sir. Sorry to hear about old Breacher. Damn shame. Yep. Best there ever was. Well, why this rush call? The end of the line I'm pulling out right now starts with that Paw D boy we've been talking about. Yeah, if we'd known he was coming up your way, I sure would have called you. The favor I want is I need you to chase him across the line into McNary. <laughs> How the hell are we going to do that? I guarantee you. Anytime he sees flashing lights behind him, simply against his nature, pull over and stop. He's just going to open up and watching them lights getting smaller and smaller in his rearview mirror. And what you're saying is, you want me to invent a reason to get on his tail, and then kind of chase him across the line to you. Hearing you put it like that, Red, I'd be mighty obliged. Well, this sure ain't going down in the books, but uh, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if one of my men find a reason to pull that party boy over, you know, make sure his license is up to date. I'll be waiting for your call. You take care of yourself now, Buford. I aim to do just that. You can spare the time away from your study and I'll show you some of them back roads now. This is very kind of you, Sheriff, to spare me some of your valuable time. Well, that's the whole rest of the day. Old Miss have a pretty good history library, do they? Oh, one of the best. But it's a rare old book you find in a catacourt house that makes research so exciting. Is that one or two elves in Stilson? Just one. Oh, 
Damn. What happened? Left that map I had all the places marked down at the cottage I'm renting at the lake. That's all right. It ain't that far out of the way. You don't mind? Really? Really. Now that's sweet. faces to me. Why, oh, you plum lost your marbles. And I believe I prefer you seeing me to my car. You just take off your hand off me. Get out of here now. You just let go of me. Dobson will start Bar D. Tell him same thing for me, will you? You pig! Pig! You bastard! One stupid blunder after another. Just bring that son of a bitch that much closer to this house. Man, just extraordinary lucky, Mr. Witter. That's all there is but to it. There is no luck when you come right down to the bone, Dobson. Look, we crashed him out over a hundred miles an hour. Loaded all that dynamite onto the hood of that car, hacksawed through the steering pin, fixed the accelerator, fixed the brakes. How was I to know he's gonna put a nigger deputy in that car? Man, have to be a mind reader. Sit down. Now, this is my final statement to you two. I'm gonna take a little business trip to New York, maybe even to Europe. I'll be back in this house in three weeks. Man named Buford Pusser, still sheriff of McNary County. When I get back, I'm gonna shut down every goddamn boiler you got cooking along the river there, Dobson, cause you ain't got no market if I say so. And I am talking about four states. Playing them fancy actions what screwed us up, won't know what I think. I sure don't, Ray Henry. Now you brought this down on my back, Dobson, and you just get it off my back. Now, you understand that, or you too goddamn stupid? Well, it ain't gonna be pretty this time, Mr. Widow, but I promise you, before you get back, I'll tell you how we're gonna do it. I don't wanna know. Machine guns. I Re told you. I don't wanna know how you do it. Just do it. Okay, Henry.
Car 4N is a Nelly calling in, Sheriff Tanner there, over. This is Tanner Thomas, over. That boy, uh, Pardee, uh, see his new car parked here in front of the steak and lobster house. Over. You notice any violations, over. Just he ain't got no red glass over his left rear taillight, over. I understand. Now listen, there's two cars coming to back you up. Just aim him in the right direction, over. Shouldn't be no problem. I need to help with something, Dad. Sure, do for the hang you want. I'll get it. Do you think you can find a whole bunch of logs and then fit each end with an eye ring and some snap-on chain sections? Well, I expect I can, yeah. Okay. Can you also find someone to help you? <laughs> I guess that'll be just about anybody my age I know around here. All right. Sheriff sure, Tanner from Alcorn, Daddy. Right. Ma? Huh? Could you get warm for me? <laughs> Some ambulance. Chef Puster here, 10, 12 miles west of Raymer. Get on out here. Puster, this gasoline's leaking all over me. We get me out of this car? Come on. Come on. Man, this car's gonna go up any second. Who was it that paid you, Stan? I think I got a, a busted shoulder. Just unhooked me, will you, man? You never answered my question. It was... It was Dobson. Freaky Dobson, now get me out of here. Hey, y'all need some help down there? No, get on out of here.
thousand rounds. If you need any more, come see me. Good. Thank you. It's just right. About time. Let's start getting ready to get these sticks off of here now. Come on, bring off the ends there. Now we got to pull them on down here towards the water. All right, you're doing fine. Push it on out of there a little bit. That's just about it. She's plumb bank to bank. All right, time off now.
warned you to stop. Yeah. Louvain, this is Ray. I keep calling Peggy's number. He don't answer. I won't even know I'm back. What the hell are you calling me at this hour for? It, it, it ain't even 10 o'clock. Okay. What do you want me to tell him when he comes by here? What I got what we was looking to get is what I wanted to know. Tell him to get up here as soon as he can so I can show him. Don't forget, you tell him, here. Yeah, okay. Sorry, ma'am, ain't allowed to take nothing in. Three minutes, all you're allowed to stay. Pick up your bag on the way out. I didn't even know Ray Henry was happy. You know he killed his mother, his wife, and a deputy. And still only serves five, six years, no matter who he kills. Some say love is wonderful It's about how the one can feel It's the kind of truth I first said But be wired to see if it's real Love can be a painful life It can make your heart be seen It can also make past people cry Love can lead to sorrow And being loved hurt is our mysterious way The sun for is to world Some can find the love of their life Someone liberal that car I may make a love one as a love that is meant to last When you fail to see beyond beauty Then your love never dies Love can be yours Some say love is wonderful It's about how the one can where are we at, Sheriff? Missy. His girl Ruby Ann lives down there.
can see them. Ruby Ann, put a gun out on the road. Come on. Don't you come near me, you understand? I'm all wet. You made me wet my pants. Where's Ray, Henry? Give me an ambulance. I'm pouring out blood. Help him! I ask you, where's Ray Henry? Right there in Selma on that, in that boarding house, Fifth Street and Avenue. Shut up. Who gives a damn about that stupid Ray Henry? Would you just go call an ambulance and get help for Pinky here? No place gonna be safe, you that big mouth of yours, Ruby Ann. I ain't afraid of that fat, fat old John Winter the way you two are. He don't scare me none, that, that, the Mr. Nashville, that big shot with her. Nothing you say means anything. Nothing you say yeah. means anything. I love you, Pinky. Oh, just shut up, Ruby Ann. You keep an eye on those two. Take it easy. There's an ambulance on the way. Sam Ambulance, Sam Ambulance. This is 501. Four, five miles north of Adamsville. Route 22. Gunshot. On number three, this is 501. Come on in, over. Brady here, Buford. The boarding house on 5th Street and the Avenue. There's an armed parolee, Ray Henry, holding up there. Now, quietly get everybody out of that boarding house. Close off both ends of the Avenue to all traffic. 
Don't nobody try to move in on him. Just cover him until I get there. I understand, Buford. I'm on my way. That's it right there, that window there. It's a room at the top of the stairs. Landlady seen him go in last night. He ain't come out yet. Is everybody else out? Yeah. I got men all four sides. If he starts shooting, he ain't going nowhere. Well, I don't want any shooting. Miles, you pass that word. I don't want any unnecessary shooting. Now, take another walk of talkie. Tape it to the mic on one of the squad cars. Put it on PA. Go to If you look out your window, you'll find a dozen shotgun barrels aiming right up your way. What are you here for, sir? You got no charge against me. I ain't done nothing. We're good. Then throw your gun out. Come on out, and we can talk about it. You know what I'm at on parole? Are you listening to me, Ray Henry? I told my men. Not to do any shooting. But what I want you to do is pull them shades up, throw out the gun, and then stand smack center of that window. Hey, right, now I'm gonna open the shade. Don't nobody shoot at me. Well, you got my word. Sure. All right, now throw out your gun. I ain't got no gun. God damn it, Ray Henry, throw out your gun. Okay, I just threw it out. Now stand still in that window. He got me, Grady. Yeah, he got you. He didn't get me good. He wanted him what did it, Buford? Yeah. He and Dawson were the last two. We're actually at the ambush. That finally does it, then, huh? No. Great, 
baby. Remember a man who came down to shake my hand when I was first elected sheriff? Widder. John Widder. Which one of them was he? Fat man from Nashville. Yeah, I remember him. You know, almost forgotten about him. before midnight, August 20th, 1974, Tennessee State Trooper Paul Urban was dispatched to the scene of a car crash near Selmer, McNary County, four miles from Buford Putzer's home. This is his official report. The driver, Buford Putzer, was killed. His car destroyed by fire. There were no other vehicles involved. There were no witnesses. Thank you. 